Tom's unsettling devotion to his sister bordered on a classic sister complex. Our home, once our sanctuary, morphed into a playground for my sister-in-law and her husband. They'd sift through my belongings with a sense of entitlement, while Tom turned a blind eye, his silence a tacit endorsement of their invasive antics. The tension had escalated to its peak. Here, I stand, Jessica, 28, basking in the glow of a recent work promotion, yet teetering on the edge of a marital abyss. Despite the whispers of it being too soon, I cherish the victories and the shared moments of bliss with my husband, Tom. My career was soaring, and with Tom, I thought I had won the lottery of love. That was until a business trip emerged, a new venture for me. What began as nervousness blossomed into excitement, a testament to my professional ascent. Although these trips were now a staple of my job, they remained brief, a nod to my nascent nuptials. But a looming three-day journey stirred the pot. Upon hearing of it, Tom's solution was to invite Sarah to our love nest. Her unnerving proximity to him, despite her own marriage, left me perplexed. Why should Sarah stay over? I challenged. Tom's reasoning was that running the house solo was daunting, that Sarah, a domestic maven, could ease my burden. You'll travel with a clear mind, he assured me, yet the very notion made me bristle. I yearned to suggest he step up, but the words eluded me. Deep down, I didn't want Sarah there. Her casual disregard for our space, her unannounced visits, they unsettled me. And then, as if on cue, Sarah and her husband appeared at our door. I had harbored a faint hope that her husband possessed a modicum of sense, but it was in vain. He shared her lack of decorum, assuming he was entitled to our hospitality. Hey, are you cooking? I'm famished, he declared, expecting to be fed. Though Tom bore a silent resentment towards him for marrying Sarah, he did nothing to stem the tide of their imposition. The man, a habitual gambler, squandered his weekends at casinos. His unexpected presence in our home left me cold. Uninvited, I remarked, frost in my tone. His retort was as brazen as it was blunt, here for the free food, he declared, his disregard for my feelings starkly evident. Tom's unwavering smile whenever Sarah was around baffled me, especially since he'd entrusted her with a key to our home. More often than not, I'd return to find her entrenched on our couch, casually mentioning her cravings. Despite knowing it irked me, Sarah felt entitled to my belongings, depleting my makeup with a nonchalant expectation of its replenishment. This is finished. Get another? She'd demand. Tom, on the other hand, reveled in her presence, advocating for a communal spirit in our home. Isn't it great to have a sister? Tom would say, oblivious to my growing despair. The thought of the liberties Sarah might take during my business absence filled me with dread. I had to confront the issue. Sarah, you have your own home. Can you refrain from visiting while I'm away? I pleaded. Tom was adamant. She wants to help. She's alone with her husband away, he said, viewing their bond as a form of support. But his reassurances did nothing to quell the storm brewing within me. It wasn't jealousy, it was a yearning for boundaries. With a hollow is that so? I left for my trip, my mind teeming with anxious thoughts about the state I'd find my home and upon return. My fears were confirmed when I came back to find Sarah sprawled out, the house in disarray, and our supplies depleted. Thanks for your help, but it's time for you to go, I said, my voice steady but polite. Sarah's reply was as dismissive as ever, nope, I'm staying. Sushi night, remember? The tradition of sushi night, one Tom had upheld without fail, now felt like a betrayal, he hadn't even called to check on me once. I needed to talk to him. I need some space to unwind after my trip. Alone. Do you understand? I implored, seeking just a sliver of solace in my own home. Tom's nonchalance was like a sting. You're practically sisters, he said, brushing off my irritation as if it were nothing. Meanwhile, Sarah had taken residence in our home during my trip, leaving behind a trail of disarray. My room bore the brunt of her stay, my cosmetics and accessories had vanished. The rapid depletion of my expensive toner, which I used sparingly, was infuriating. And when I noticed my accessories were missing, I confronted Sarah. Her nonchalant response, it just fits so well, I had to try it. I'll return it, did nothing to assuage my anger. I turned to Tom, my patience frayed. This has to stop, I insisted. 
She's just borrowing, he replied, his indifference to my feelings evident. Why can't you trust my sister? He asked, his words leaving me feeling dismissed, isolated. Exhausted, I succumbed to a restless sleep, my mind a whirlpool of unresolved emotions. Three weeks later, a week-long business trip approached. Tom's surprise at the length was palpable. A whole week? Sarah can handle it, he said, but his words did little to reassure me. Tom, I don't want Sarah here in my absence, I declared. His bewilderment was clear. But she's family, he protested. I recounted the neglected chores and my missing items. He fell silent, the unspoken truth hanging between us. She doesn't ask, and she doesn't return, I pressed on. Tom relented, but with a catch, there was laundry to be done and no one to do it. She'll come for a day, then she'll leave, he proposed. Why not do the laundry yourself? I suggested. I was a novice at laundry, and Tom offered to teach me, but I stood firm. One day, no overnight, I agreed, though my trust in Tom was waning. Upon my return a week later, I found Sarah, entrenched in our home, chores untouched. What happened? I demanded. Tom's excuse was weak. The chores were overwhelming. I had her come for two days. I felt the betrayal. You promised one day. Tom's response was dismissive. Don't overreact. She's family, and you're away often. She's just helping. His justification felt like a dismissal. Business trips are work, not a holiday, I retorted, my voice a mix of frustration and resolve. Tom's words, blind to my dismay, fell like hammer strikes. Sarah's divorced, jobless. Maybe she could stay with us during your trips? I was floored. Shouldn't we decide together? I countered. You're capable of doing housework. But he was adamant, we need to help her. She's family. His unilateral decisions were chipping away at the foundation of our partnership. You're cold, Tom chided when I voiced my hesitation. It's temporary, he promised, with Sarah vowing to seek independence promptly. She had already vacated her marital home, unwilling to linger in its memories. The revelation hit hard. Why wasn't I consulted? I demanded. Tom's defense was swift, we're family. We look after each other. His words stung, and impulsively, I grabbed my suitcase and left. The glow of an internet cafe sign offered a temporary haven. Tom's call interrupted my solitude. We shouldn't overreact, he urged. She needs us, and she'll help out. His plea to remember our vows fell on deaf ears. I can't stand her, I admitted. If it's that bad, maybe you should leave, he replied, a chilling suggestion. You're okay with that? I asked, incredulous. Yes, he said, his voice resolute. But don't expect my sympathy if you regret it. The line went dead. As I cooled down, resolve crystallized. Tom was pushing me out, and I was determined to make him feel the weight of his choice. I started to plot my next move, gathering what I needed. Then, as if on cue, Tom's frantic call came. John's here, he blurted out, his voice a mix of confusion and urgency. I had orchestrated John's arrival, my brother adept at household management. I had also spoken to Tom's parents, arranging for Sarah to stay with them, ensuring that my absence would be felt but not my responsibility. Tom's bewilderment was palpable. A visit to the parents and John's sudden takeover? He questioned. Why involve him without telling me? I explained that John's knack for domestic affairs made him the ideal stand-in during my trips. You should have consulted me, Tom argued, the irony of his words not lost on either of us. Just like I should have been told about Sarah, I countered. His silence spoke volumes, tinged with guilt. Isn't it selfish? I pressed on. You arranged for your convenience, ignoring how it affected me. Tom had no response, my point had struck a nerve. For any household help, John's now your point of contact, I declared. I ended the call, leaving Tom's attempts to reach me unanswered. With John's assistance, I initiated the next phase of my plan. Tom's urgent call came soon after. Jessica, I need you, he implored. What's wrong? I asked, masking my satisfaction. Your brother's using my things, my suits, my bags, without asking, Tom complained. Like how you allowed Sarah to use mine? 
I reminded him. She's your sister, right? Can't you share with her? Tom fell silent, his double standards laid bare. I've told your parents about everything, I continued. Sarah must be getting an earful. It was a small consolation that my reasonable in-laws were on my side. You involved my parents? Tom was incredulous. You didn't heed my concerns, I pointed out. He hadn't anticipated that I would involve his parents, who had agreed to a temporary communication hiatus with him. Hours later, I returned home, my in-laws and Sarah in tow. Tom was quick to voice his displeasure, but this time, I was ready to confront the situation head-on. As I walked in, Tom's greeting lacked warmth. Oh, you're back, he said, his tone heavy with reproach. He didn't apologize but instead chose to aim his frustration at me. Ignoring his attitude, I gathered everyone in the living room and played the video I had prepared. The footage left Tom and Sarah speechless. What is this? Why? They stammered, caught off guard. The hidden camera I had installed had captured Sarah rifling through my belongings and taking them without permission. I'm sorry, but I had my suspicions, I confessed, revealing that I had set up the camera before my business trip. My father-in-law's anger was palpable as he watched. At your age, can't you tell right from wrong? He scolded. My mother-in-law was visibly shaken, her face flushed with emotion. With this evidence, my path to retribution was complete. I presented Tom with the divorce papers. You're serious? Over this? He asked, incredulous. Do you realize how much distress this trivial issue has cost me? I replied. My concerns had always been secondary to Sarah's needs in his eyes. Sarah's habitual borrowing without permission, which was tantamount to theft, was the last straw. I could press charges, I told him. Please sign the papers. Tom, shaking, finally acquiesced under the silent watch of his parents. With the signed papers in hand, I immediately began to pack, ready to close this chapter of my life and move forward. As I packed my belongings, Tom tried to appeal to my practical side. Jessica, wait. If you leave, I can't afford this place on my own. His plea was a stark reminder of the financial realities tied to our shared life, but his words fell on deaf ears. The apartment's prime location and high rent were his concerns now, not mine. The pained looks on my in-law's faces might have once tugged at my heartstrings, but that time had passed. My empathy for Tom had evaporated, their distress was irrelevant to me. We're strangers now, I said with finality. Figure it out yourself. You have your beloved sister, don't you? Find somewhere that suits your budget. With that, I left the apartment and immediately took steps to finalize the divorce, moving into a new place closer to work. Tom's attempts to reach out through calls and emails soon became a nuisance. In response, I blocked him, severing the last of our communication. His current situation is a mystery to me and, frankly, of no concern. Now, I'm enjoying the peace and independence that comes with being on my own.